being transformed. The subtitle of today's message is, Are You Good Ground? Come with me to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. We'll look at verses 22 and 23. Where y'all going? It says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Love one another fervently with a pure heart. If we allow the enemy to divide and distract it prevents us from lining up with the word of God. This is so valuable because this will prevent transformation. Raise your hand if you desire to be transformed. If you desire, you know, the thing about that question is you can always go higher. You can always go from glory to glory. Our subtitle is, you are, are you good ground? The word of God is the incorruptible seed, true or not true. Can we agree there's nothing wrong with the seed? The seed is incorruptible. The seed is going to do what the seed is supposed to do. The word of God contains the life of God. When the word gets planted in good soil, when the word is planted, there is nothing that will prevent it from flowing. Family, any deficit in our lives comes from a lack of word concerning that area in our lives. When sickness rules in any area, it's just a lack. It's, 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 not, it's not unavailable. Let me say it that way. Victory is not unavailable. Can we agree on that? Victory is available for you and I. And I don't know about you, but isn't it time out to not have what God says? Isn't it time out from not walking according to the word of God, not walking according to the promises, not receiving the rewards that are promised to God's children? Look at your neighbor and say, if not you, who? If not you, who? Who are the promises of God for? When the word is planted in our hearts, it releases God's design for our lives. And I promise you, God's design for your life is good. God's design for your life is health and healing, prosperity, victory. God's design for your life has nothing to do with depression, anxiety, worry, stress, sickness, disease. That is never God's plan for your life. The seed is incorruptible. Here's the question for all of us. Am I good ground? Am I good ground? You know what has hindered good ground in the past what I've seen is unforgiveness, offense, choosing to not get out of the way. And in doing that, we, we, we think we're creating some sort of self-defense mechanism, but what we do is we harden our own soil. When someone does something wrong, we hold it against them, but we harden our heart. When someone does something that's, that's so horrendous and we make a vow to never forgive them, we're saying this heart is never going to be pliable again. And in a self-defense moment, we don't think that way. We don't understand that's what we're doing. But family, I promise you, some of the things that are hindering the body of, of Christ have been self-inflicted. Let's take a look at the different types of grounds talked about. Let's go to Mark chapter four and verse three. How many of you want to be good ground? 
Mark 4, 3 says, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. That's talking about a, a, a path or a, 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 a sidewalk. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. This first type of ground is very shallow. Nothing can grow in a very shallow ground. And it's always exposed to the elements when it's in the shallow ground. It never goes beyond the surface. This represents the people of God who hear the word of God, but allow it to be snatched away by distractions. Now let's drop down to verse five, Mark four, five. It says, this is the second type of ground. It says, some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. This second type of ground we see here in the word of God is hardened. Where the seed sprouts up quickly, but it lacks depth. And it is sure to wither away. This represents those who hear the word of God with joy to get excited, but they fail to develop a strong foundation. They fail to develop a soil that is pliable, that sets the seed up for success. This person that's referenced here is someone when challenges show up, when trials come their way, they quickly lose faith and they give up. That God stuff don't work. I tried that. I'm tired of, I'm tired of church people. I ain't going back to church. Family, never hold Jesus hostage because of what his kids do. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the only answer. He is our solution. Don't ever turn your back on Jesus because of his knucklehead kids. Drop down to verse 7. Mark 4, 7, we're talking about the different types of ground. Let's read this together. Y'all too comfortable. <laughs> Ready? Read. And some f- and fell on the thongs, and thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Now we're talking about this third type of thorning ground where the seed actually begins to grow. There's, there's actually some, 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 some fruit happening. There's something going on. The, the individual has gone from, from not knowing the things of God to knowing the things of God, from overcoming, and, and there's some victories taking place. Amongst the thorn, and then it gets to a point where the thorns begin to overtake what is growing. It begins to get choked out by the thorn. This represents a person who hears the word, but allows the cares, the riches, and the pleasures of life to take priority over the incorruptible seed. Their hearts become entangled with worldly pursuits. I got to go get that money. I got to get paid. You know, I I I would come to church. However, they pay me, pastor. I would get involved, but... I got to go get another deal. I got to get another. I got to, I got to, I got to pursue this. And family, hear this with your whole heart. When we pursue provisions, we're not pursuing purpose. And provision will never produce purpose in our lives. And I don't care how much provision we hold on to, it will never produce identity. Never. 
It's so important to know and understand, God, am I doing what you created me to do? Family, his provision always follows his vision. He is never going to create something and not provide for it. He's never going to call a child of God to run a lane and not pave that lane with provision and fulfillment and joy and peace. Never. Another very valuable principle we need to take heart and hold on to. God never starts something that he hasn't already completed. If he has begun a work in you, you can rest assured he's going to see it through. Here's the question. Are you going to allow him to see it through? Purpose over provision, family. Love the giver more than you love his gifts. You will always find time. This is something that has proven true over and over and over again. I hear things like, and I've been guilty of, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. You know what is true? We will always find time for what we value. So if you ever hear yourself saying, I don't have time for God, I don't have time for the word, I don't have time for God's people, what you're saying is, God, I don't value you. God, I don't value your word. I don't value your children. Can I just be real about it? That's the truth. We always find time for what we value. Ephesians 3, 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. Look at your neighbor and say, saturate your ground with love. Saturate your ground with love. Let's drop down to verse 8, Mark chapter 4 and verse 8. Check your neighbor out. Make sure they're not in Psalms. Mark chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, but the other seed fell on good ground. Now, I want to clarify something. This is the same seed. The seed is not changing. This is the same seed. And, and family, make your mind up. There is only one type of ground that produces a harvest. There's only one. There's only one. Pastor, at least I'm getting some seed, but if it's the wayside seed, if it's on the sidewalk, it ain't gonna produce. There's just, there's just so much going on in my life. There's just, there's, there's so many moving parts. Sounds like thorns to me. And it don't matter. The word could be there. The seed could be there. But it is being choked out by the thorns. Don't expect it to produce. All of us need to check our hearts and say, Lord, am I good ground? Because the only ground that's ever going to produce is what type? That's it. I wish we got brownie points for the stony ground. The, the, I, I wish we did. I, I, wish, I, I wish we got an E for effort. But the only ground that produces is good ground. Where the seed grows and produces a harvest. And look at this. It yielded a crop that sprang up. For starters, I want to stop at that word that sprang up. Can you, can you see that action word? That sprang up. Family, the word of God is going to produce in your life. And people around you are going to see it. If you're good ground. And the yielded crop and sprang up increased. It increased. It didn't just sprang up. That seed increased and it produced some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. How much do you want? 
Amanda, I hope your hearts are open. I hope you are hearing this message because nobody controls the soil but us. I can't even pray for your soil. I can't even, I, you and I are responsible for our soil. We got to get it, family. We, we, have got, we have got to internalize this message and check our hearts to make sure we are good grounds. Because as we see in the word of God, it's the only productive ground available. There's only one. There's only one fruit bearing ground, the good ground, where the seed grows, not only grows, it springs up, it increases and it produces increase is at hand. You know what the the end result of this word? The end result of you and I grabbing hold of this message is results. Who is it that you need to forgive? If it's hindering your ground, it ain't worth it. If it's hindering your ability to produce fruit, for you to be a fruitful child of God, could it possibly be worth it? Never. It don't matter how bad it was, how wrong it was, how unfair it was. If it hinders your crop, forgive, release, let go. And give God the opportunity to show himself strong in your life. Let them do it. I'm growing up in church when the church mothers used to say, won't, that, won't he do it? Won't he do it? You know, a, a modern day twist on that, not if you won't let him. <laughs> not if you won't let him. We have to participate in God's plan. Somebody say amen to that. Is that, am I not telling the truth? We are free will agents. The Holy Spirit is not a bully. He's looking for our participation. This ground, the fourth ground, the good ground, represents those who hear the word of God and embrace it. They say, Lord, I take that correction. Lord, I receive that and I will make the adjustment. You know, every time you have an opportunity to make a mid-course correction, whatever you do, make it. If God ever speaks something to you and it's a little, oh, make it. Because it's always worth it. If you think about it, a mid-course correction, if you're, if you're going on a long journey, if you're heading in, in a direction and you drift just a little bit, over a long period of time, that little drift is going to take you completely off your destination. Completely. So we need mid course correction. Oh, what am I doing? Oh my goodness, what am I thinking? You know what? I got to go tell them I'm sorry. You know, because the direction, the destination that we are on is worth it. Having Good ground is worth fighting for. Not growing is not God's plan. Family, you and I need to look in the mirror next year and say, wow, look what God has done. My God, that revelation. My God, that, wait, family, that's not happening. That's wrong. If we're not growing, it's wrong. Healthy things grow. Good ground produces a harvest that springs up, increases, and produces. That's not happening. It, 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 it behooves us to say, Lord, where, where am I? Who, who did I, how, how did I begin to compact my heart and make the adjustment? I promise you it's worth it. The only way to be transformed, this whole series is called being transformed. And the reason why I believe God told me to start this way is because without good ground, we're not being transformed. There is no transformation if the soil is locked up, dry, cracking.
The only way to be transformed is by being good ground. Say this, Lord, help me. I want to be good ground. I want to live a productive, fruitful life to advance the kingdom. You ever notice when you're going through your own stuff, you ain't looking up? You ever notice? The kingdom advances when you and I get involved with the king's business. When we're going through, our heads are down, when we're on our back, when we're, when we're, when we're struggling, when we're, we're having a hard time getting the, 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 the covers from over our heads, we are not advancing the kingdom. Being good ground requires cultivating your soil and it requires removing weeds that have crept in and began to grow. It means removing distractions and entanglement. Some of us are conforming to Netflix versus the word of God. You understand we conform to whatever we're, we're, we're entangled with, where we're hanging out with. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I won't say nothing else about Netflix. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take the brakes off. <laughs> Stay open. Stay open. <laughs> y'all <Yo>, like. <laughs> Just, it was like. <laughs> All right, forget that saying. Scratch that. Stay open. Stay open. Family, your good ground is far more important than anything else. It is far more important than winning an argument. Your good ground is more important than you being right. Somebody say amen. You're sitting next to your spouse, just keep looking straight. Your good ground is more important than what people think about you. Focus on King Jesus and his kingdom and fruit will flood your life. We have to choose to be good ground. Let the fruit of the spirit flow through you. Let love, joy, peace flow through you. That happens when you and I choose. We have to choose to be good ground. There are some things we don't want to give up that we need to give up. There are some people you don't want to forgive that you need to forgive. There, there are some things that, that you, you, you want to shift. You, you're, you're, you are going to see somebody who you don't want to see this week and you're, and you're, and you're worked up about it right now. I'm not even going to ask who that is. You're worked up about it. Your ground is more important. Protect your soil. Look at your neighbor and say, protect your soil. Being good ground requires renewing your mind. It requires renewing your mind. It requires you and I removing the thorns and the rocks that hinder growth. Let a fence roll off of you like water off a duck's back. People offend you, so what? I got a, I'm, I got, I got a huge garden. I'm working on. You know, say what you want to say. You know, and I just, it, it just, it's just not up for grabs. Not gonna happen. And that takes work, family. We have to be intentional. We, we have to absolutely choose this lifestyle in order to benefit from the promises of God. Forgive who you need to forgive. Here, here's a great practice. I'm gonna encourage you to start participating. You be quick to apologize. Be the first to apologize. Why? Because you got a garden you're working on. You got a flourishing, fruit producing garden. And you don't want somebody's heavy rock. You don't want somebody planting thorns because you didn't get your way.
Your harvest is way too important. Thanks for joining us today. We hope that you picked up what God had in store for you. And if not, feel free to rewatch and definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel and be on the lookout for future content. We are so excited to see what God has in store for you. And we'll see you next time.